city and its people. What you doing? A little girl looks you square in the face. She doesn't smile, she doesn't frown, and she sure as hell doesn't look shy. Olivia, silly. You don't. I need to think about this. She thinks about this. Hmm. Now that you're here, can't very well leave. Suppose you told someone. Nah, that wouldn't do. No, nah, you'll just have to die. Get my troll to do it. Yeah, that's what we'll do. The troll will fix it. And then you'll be dead. You talk funny. And you're not very clever. I like you. Hey, got any money? All right, but they better not be boring. My daddy once said, don't go to the toilet on your own doorstep. Then my mom chased him away for going in the bedroom. Them crates belong to dwarves. We leave them alone, the crates and the dwarves. They're our friends. Pom Pom can talk to him. They're not very clever, but she says they're nice. Keep your hands off our stuff. Hello. What do you say when a cat wins the dog show? It's a catastrophe. <laughs> You're fun. I like you. He's my friend. I like him too. But he has a terrible sense of humour. And he eats cats. Oh, he's not tame. He's not tame at all. I don't think so. Trolls don't like grown-ups. Anyways, I'm not in charge. Tamora's in charge. We all do what she says. Bye then. Did you hear about the cat who lost all its money? It was poor. Poor. It was poor. As in poor. It was poor. That painting is definitely unique. Thanks. Hello. Got any more money? They're our friends. Pom Pom can talk to him. They're not very clever, but she says they're nice. Yeah, it's all right. Let me think. No. That's for me to know and you to never find out. I stole it from Lord Kem's house, didn't I? And so what? I only took one of them. The other two were too heavy. Got them up. There's a pulley thing here. And then a pool with no water and a hatch in it. Easy. Yeah. No. OK. You can have it for this much. Take the stupid painting, then. I never liked it anyway.
Keep your hands off our stuff. A guard rushes in front of you, and before you can flinch, the point of a sharp spear draws a bead of blood from the artery in your neck. Halt! State your name! Now! Marcus! Guard, lower your spear. An old friend's come to pay a visit.
There's an air about. Rubbish.
The dwarf stares grimly into space. Rings adorn his fingers, some of which glitter with ornate rose-tinted jewels. You notice one has a gem missing. If you'll excuse me, I'd just as soon be left with my thoughts. The groom looks you over with a sneer and mutters, Hmm. No, I don't think you'll be of much use. He turns back to the window with a grunt, anxiously twisting the rings on his fingers. Lucky I was posted indoors. Something stinks around here. This bouquet is mine. Get in my way and you'll get an elbow in the eye. So much death on such a lovely day. Curled upper lip, lightly bobbing head, unwavering gaze, there's no doubting the spirit's distaste of current circumstances.
The spirit of a dwarf guard patrols the garden, oblivious to the fact that he's dead. Get in my way and you'll get an elbow in the eye. The spirit of a guard gazes around the garden sternly. Clearly, he's unaware of his demise. The spirit of an elven dignitary remains seated in a pew where the wedding unfolded. He stifles a disinterested yawn. The spirit of a dwarven attendee attempts to discreetly sip from a goblet of spectral wine he stashed beneath him. I found something. The spirit of a dwarven lady stands eagerly by, as if she's waiting to catch a bouquet. The spirit shoos you away absently, her gaze fixed intently on the arc that the bouquet is taking through the air. There are toys in the kitchen. They're alive, and they look hostile. Time to play!
is happening out here? Haven't we seen enough tragedy today? He considers the wreckage surrounding the X cake. Understanding dawns. That cake, it came from the doctor with a letter of congratulation. It was truly a magnificent sight, but the wedding was cut short before we could even slice it. Void woken, sabotage, bad cake. You'd think someone had it in for our little lady. Few have seen his face, and no one knows his name. He corresponds only by messenger. The townspeople seldom speak of him, which is strange now that I think of it. He'll open your belly and fill it with jelly. The doctor is in, the doctor is in. He'll rip off your toes and shove them up your nose. The doctor is in, the doctor is in. Heard a kid singing that the other day. Her mother heard it too and beat the poor tyke senseless. <laughs> that was funny, I have to admit. Gotta take your entertainment where you can when you're on duty. There is little to tell. He's just the doctor. He speaks to few, and few wish to speak of him unless they're desperate. No one even knows his name. It's easiest if I show you. Let me see your map. He shakes his head and whistles as he identifies the doctor's home on your map. If there was ever a house that was haunted, well, that's the one. They say almost no one gets in, and those who do never come out. Can't say I blame you. I don't want to appear disloyal, but as dwarfen weddings go, this one had a tad more blood than usual. A tad. Come on, throw it! This bouquet is mine. Get in my way and you'll get an elbow in the eye. The spirit of an elegantly dressed woman glances around, seemingly more interested in the other guests than in the unfolding ceremony. Come on, throw it! This bouquet is mine. Get in my way and you'll get an elbow in the eye. The spirit of a dwarven lady remains wrapped by the since-interrupted wedding ceremony. She dabs away some tears with a handkerchief. Come on, throw the spirit it. of a dwarf watches the ceremony with a scowl. He tugs at his ornate collar in an effort to loosen it. Get in my way and you'll get an elbow in the eye. You recognize the trumpet. This is the Queen of Pearls, playing a fanfare for her lover, Duna, the god of all dwarves. The stone smells of granite and rose water, but beneath the aroma, a familiar smell lingers, death fog. And then you see it. The horn of the trumpet connects to a pipe. The pipe disappears into the dirt. The scent of death fog comes from under the ground.
nothing sacred anymore. All safe. God, I am so sorry. How could I have known? She looks up at you with glassy eyes, wiping her tear-streaked face on one brocade sleeve. A girl's wedding should be the happiest day of her life. She looks down at her feet. Seeing her blood-spattered wedding slippers, her face crumples and tears spring from her eyes. I should be so happy. Everybody should be so happy. But before we could even cut our wedding cake, there were void woken everywhere. We barely made it indoors alive. But not everyone was so lucky. I... I can hardly bear to think of them. Their wives and husbands and children back in the kingdom. Left to grieve alone. What are you insinuating? We're merchants, not mystics. You should have seen those void monsters. All that blood, all that death. They didn't deserve... We didn't. She buries her head in her hands, sobbing uncontrollably. I... I can't accept them. I know you mean well, but how can I celebrate now? Void woken on my wedding day. At least... at least my loving husband is still with me. She turns and waves one timid hand to her husband on the balcony. He offers an apathetic grunt in return. She blinks back tears from her pink-tinged eyes. Please forgive him. He's broken up. It's a lot to take in. We lost so much in the blink of an eye. I have been feeling peaky lately. My darling said it was the rosy glow of a woman in love. But now, I think it was a warning. A sign of the massacre to come. My poor love. He needs a moment to himself. And who wouldn't? Today should have been so different. She takes a shuddering breath and idly itches her face. You would expect her cheeks to be ruddy from tears, but they are pale instead, almost translucent, revealing the vessels snaking underneath. The woman cries on. The woman cries uncontrollably. The woman cries on. God, I am so... She looks up at you. A girl's wedding should be the happiest day of her life. I don't know how this... Can... She looks down at her. I sh we barely made it indoors alive. I... She turns. Please forgive it. What else? She takes a shuddering breath and idly itches her face. I have been... My lord, I beg your pardon, but the feast has been cut short due to, uh, active gods. The dwarf rubs his temples, his rings glittering rose gold in the light. What? Yes, it's been a horrendous day. Still, it's a fine match. With her assets and my name, I, that is to say, we, will be a force to be reckoned with. He glances over at his distraught bride as she takes another sip from her goblet. Events like today's do have a way of putting things in perspective. There's much to be gained from this alliance. It survived the Void Woken after all. Out with the old, in with the new, I suppose. Yet... <laughs> Old Man Ross left the incident quite unharmed. Love? Duna's beard. Is that what passes for sense among the lower classes? She is quite enamored with me, of course. I can be, well, irresistible. But no. In my family, marriage is a more practical matter. Our union means I can continue my work. A job? 
Please don't be churlish. I'm no dairy maid desperate for her next meal. I follow my passion. Alchemy. Potions which, at a sip, can heal or kill. Can grant strength, speed, or compliance. Which have the power to transform base metal into gold. He glances across the room, where his betrothed is pouring herself another goblet of wine. Yes, indeed. Our union will definitely be of value. Even with today's rather dark start. You make it sound like she's a victim, rather than someone who just married into one of the oldest houses in the kingdom. We trace our lineage back to the time of Tenax himself. She could not ask to bear children from a more noble lineage. If anything, I'm doing her a service. I bet you heard. I bet everyone is talking about this cursed wedding. Perhaps my war horse of an aunt is right. Perhaps this is what I get for debasing myself. Still, what's done is done. The marriage is final. That's the important thing. People die all the time. Weddings aren't exempt. Not even my own. Unfortunately, sometimes people survive beyond their usefulness. The dwarf rubs his temples. What? A well-dressed dwarf paces around the room, overseeing the packing of trunks. He doesn't look up as he addresses you. Yes, thank you for coming. Indeed, it would have been a beautiful ceremony, if only... The dwarf trails off as he takes in the sight of Beast. His face goes from soft to stern, and your dwarven companion looks to you for guidance. Marcus Miles, you should get out of here. Go back to the high seas and sing your shanties and do whatever else your band of brigadiers does. We'll all be better off. Come now, Ross. Is that any way to talk to a distinguished member of the royal family? Heh. You're no royal. Not any more. A beast you were and a beast you remain. There's only one reason you'd come to Arx. You're looking for Justinia. Heed my advice and leave this place before you do something stupid. Look, I can't change the past, and I'm sure as hell not going to apologize for it. But Justinia's in trouble. Big time. And if anyone can talk some sense into her, it's me. He peers into Beast's eyes, looking for a sign of honest intent, and, satisfied, his face softens. When the crackdowns and decrees came, I defended her. But when she exiled you, I joined in the applause. But this new plan of hers, I want to believe I do, but death fog? Something's not right, Marcus. She's tuned me out. Well, she's tuned everyone out. Everyone but that advisor of hers, that is bail. Her quacking all but drowns us out. She's holding court in the sewers, if you can believe it. Go to my wine cellar. Pull out the vintage called Lula Bell. It will open the way for you. I don't know what Justinia's endgame is, Marcus, but I don't want to be anywhere near when it begins. Move on, please. Move on. Nothing to see here.
Is the pig in this painting wearing a crown? Someone must really love the little porker. You've come to serve, yes? Excellent. Bring me my slippers. Chop, chop. Oh, it's always so adorable when the peasants pretend they have lives of their own. Ah, yes, the servant returns. What say you, Pin? A well-dressed dwarf paces swiftly up. Yes, thank you for safe home to- He quickly turns away and casts a worried gaze around the room, counting something on his fingers. Oh, he'd woken at a wedding. Oh, it's too ghastly to contemplate, and yet it happened right here. My poor darling girl. Now, if you'll pardon me, as I'm sure you can imagine, I have terribly many affairs to tend to. Such chaos to write in the wake of this disaster. I appreciate your concern, but I'm sure you understand I'm quite overcome at the moment. Be sure to close the doors behind you as you leave. And, if I may, the city's in quite a state, as I'm sure you've noticed. Void woken within and without. Civil war between the powers that be. My advice? Leave arcs for fairer ground. No reason to remain. Ah, my darling Lulabelle. Isn't she a beautiful creature? A ray of light during dark times, when even a marriage ceremony can get cut short by tragedy. Yes. Hell if I know. <laughs> a terrible answer, but it's all I've got. But it wasn't long after she started hovering around Justinia that things started to change. Justinia's always been hard, if you know what I mean, but... But never heartless. I don't know what her end game is. But I don't want to be anywhere near when it begins. And you know what must be done. And why it must be done quickly. Is there more you need from me? Awful. Just awful. I spent a fortune on the decor alone. The Void Woken have made quite a mess of the place. It's Bale's brewing the stuff down in the sewers. Don't know where they're planning on using it, but I don't want to be around when they do. Attack toys, you say? Well, any other day, I wouldn't believe you. Today, nothing can surprise me. <laughs> What's next? An army of poison toads? Flying crocodiles? Fire-breathing chickens? Oh, my little Isla looked almost presentable out there. Probably for the best, she never got to dig into that cake. She's a bit on the hippie side, you know. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm sure you've your own burdens to bear. Ross taps his foot impatiently and steals a glance at his half-packed boxes. You already know how close the danger is. If it all goes to hell, I don't plan on being anywhere near this place. The dwarf rubs his temple.
What? Oh, you've met my new mother-in-law, have you? I swear it. Old man Ross has an unhealthy attachment to that animal. I prefer it when they come in the form of rashers. People die all the time. Weddings aren't exempt. Not even my own. open. Go on in. Oh. Oh, I didn't see you there. Sorry, it's been, um, quite a day. You need a hand with anything? Let me know. No, the boss's daughter was tying the knot. Guards were to make sure it was invite only. Not that... Not that it made any difference. There's no way we could have known. But even in these times, one doesn't expect a void woken to appear at a wedding. I'll tell you something, though. We'd no problem with those filthy beasties till all these guards showed up. You and me both. Worked for Ross for a decade. I'd half expected an invitation of my own. But even with half of Ark's lying dead in his garden, he still wants the shop open. Then again, if I'd been at the wedding... <sighs> the fact that the boss loves counting his pennies is probably the only reason I'm breathing. That said, it doesn't feel right to be orking wares with that next door. Job's the job, though. Can hardly leave Arks with naught but empty pockets. <sighs> Don't know much. Everyone was out in the garden for the wedding. I was watching the shop and then... Guards were everywhere, but those beasties just cut through them like butter. Boss said to keep the doors open, but... But truth be told, I feel ill just standing here. By Duna, closing can't come fast enough. Oh, of course. You won't find better in all of Arks. I can promise you that. Not bad, eh? Oh. If that ain't a bad omen, nothing is. know who I am. Uh, before you go, I should tell you... The boss has certain exclusive wares for a few choice customers. You seem like the type to appreciate such things. Thought you'd be interested. Never hurt to take our mind off these terrible times. You'll find we have some interesting specials today. With cheer the bride for the size of her nose. I was hired to guard a wedding. Nobody said anything about fighting monsters. They kicked me out. Don't they know who I am? I was hired to guard a wedding. Nobody said anything about All fighting I monsters. Did was cheer the bride for the size of her nose. They kicked me out. Don't I'm lucky I was posted I indoors. That I'd be drawing breath now if I was in the garden. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Take care of yourself. Nobody said anything about fighting monsters. The store's open. Do your shopping. The Royal Guard's eyes widen as you approach, beast in tow. His calloused fingers reach towards the wolf insignia adorning his uniform. Marcus. Marcus Miles. Beast remains silent, though his clenched jaw reveals his resentment. He moves his hand towards his weapon. <laughs> Calm yourself, Marcus. You don't know me, but I know you. The Rebellion lives. You're lucky to have found an ally here. You won't find many in this house, and certainly not among the Queen's regiment. That Isbell hasn't found me out is a minor miracle. 
So the winds would blow me off course, then? Good to know, my friend. The guard leans closer to Beast, his voice tight. The rebellion is in danger. You are in danger. Do not reveal yourself here, Marcus. The guards won't know you unless you announce yourself. Your rebels brave the hinterlands, they brave the wave dancer, and now they brave a poisoned court. They need you alive. He nods to the door, then takes the rigid stance of a proper royal guardsman. All I did was cheer the bride for the size of her nose. A well-dressed dwarf woman lies on the cobbles, giggling drunkenly to herself. I wish I was bloody <laughs> homeless, then I'd be home already. <laughs> no, I was at a wedding. Beggars kicked me out, said I was causing a scene. <laughs> the usual fuss. The groom's a local alchemist, marrying the daughter of some big shot merchant. Invitation only, I'm afraid. They'd hardly kick out their own flesh and blood, would they? I barely know any of them. Friends of friends of business acquaintances. Eh? Now, why would I do that? Fine, fine. Take the bloody thing. Now, off with you. I can feel a void walking of a headache coming along. All I did was cheer the bride for the size of her nose. The gate guard stands to attention with the professionalism her royal uniform would demand. But when she speaks, her voice quivers. Something has left her badly shaken. Move along, nothing to see here. You really don't, you know. Anyway, it's under control now, so you can move on. Move along there. The gate's to be kept clear. Be on your way. Move along, nothing to see here. No, you can't. Now clear off, or I'll escort your face first into the nearest gutter. <laughs> 